As Nigerians head to a second phase of the use lockdown, the federal government has lifted bans on several sectors, including worship centers, with state government to decide what works best for them. The Federal Ministry of Education announced the temporary close down of all schools in Nigeria, effective March 23, in a bid to contain the spread of the coronavirus. Where it would seem that most Nigerians are excited to go back to their normal life, there are still concerns on the continued closure of schools in the country. We're now joined by Professor Lai, also a professor of communications, to make sense of the matter. Thank you, Professor, also for joining us on the news. Good morning, Professor, and how are you? Good morning. Professor, do you, do you think the schools should remain closed, or is it safe to reopen them, considering that other places like mocks, the churches, and banks have been directed to reopen? Well, um... I don't think it is too safe for schools to reopen now because it appears that the number of COVID-19 is increasing. We, we have not yet reached the stage where we can say, well, maybe we have gotten to the peak and the thing is uh, coming down. Then if you look at the population of the schools, particularly at the primary and secondary school level. These are very young people who may not be able to really um, observe some of the conditions that have been laid down, like social distancing, use of masks, and all those kind of things. So the school population is quite different from the church population or from the mosque population. So I will think that as at now, it's not too safe. Now, Professor Lai, should the closure continue? Would schools in Nigeria have the technology to cater for the 46 million students affected? Well, um, uh, for now, I don't think we have adequate facilities, the infrastructure. You know, I, I guess we are talking about uh, online you know, uh, classes, online teaching, um, online um, examinations and things like that. We don't have the facilities. Schools in the urban areas, particularly schools, uh, uh, private schools, where you have the children of the elite, could be able, exactly when it comes to uh, facilities for reception, could be able to access some of these things. But when you think of schools in the rural areas, you know, schools in the urban slums, schools where the children of the poor attend, then we may not be able to really adequately deliver online education for now in this country. We are, well, there have been some attempts to start it, and I think that should be one of the takeaways from this coronavirus uh, uh, problem. Now, in the time we had the lockdown, most schools in the urban areas resorted to online studies. Now, on a general scale, do households have the facility to engage their children in remote learning? Well, that's part of what I've said, that well, there have been some attempts, some schools have started. I think they will continue to build on what they have uh, started with. But on a general note, I don't think we are really in into that uh, system at all for now. Let, let's let's consider the teachers. That, let's take a look at the teachers, Professor. Yes. Do yes. teachers have the resources to deliver live lessons or even record a massive open line course style lessons, especially institutions of higher learning in Nigeria? I don't think so, because these, they, they have some special skills that are required to mount uh, online uh, delivery of uh, lectures, online uh, tests, online exams, there are some skills that are required. And I don't think our uh, even higher institutions have been able to equip the lecturers with such skills. Are, as I said, I've been attempt using WhatsApp, using Zoom, um, the Lagos State Government experiment and all that. But these are just initial starting points. So. Lastly, Professor, unlike other countries, the Nigerian Federal Ministry of Education's school closure directive did not come with any clear court policy measures on how to mitigate learning disruptions for children. How do we address this digital divide? 
Well, um, I will say that, you know, this pandemic came and um, it's like uh, we were all caught on our wares. Nobody ever thought that it will last so long. So we must be ready to accept certain things. But the, the point that we must stress is what are the lessons are we ready to learn as we go along? One would have expected that our educational policy makers will be addressing some of the issues now and uh, be ready to really put the resources in some of the alternative uh, uh, sources, alternative platforms for educational delivery. Okay, so. Professor Lao Shaw, it's been a pleasure having you join us on the news. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much.